Hello YouTube. Today I thought I'd share with you the basic operation of a slide rule. Slide rules were used up until 1972 when the first pocket scientific calculator, the HP 35, was released. Slide rules are capable of doing multiplication and division, squaring and cubing, as well as square roots and cube roots, at their most basic level. But some slide rules, in fact most, can also do trigonometrics and uh, natural logs, regular logs, and stuff like this. In fact, slide rules work on the properties of logs. If you add two logs and then take the anti-log, you get the multiplication of two numbers. Hence, as you can see, if we're looking at the C and D scales, the space between 1 and 2 is large, and it gets progressively smaller between each set of two numbers by a logarithmic scale. And what a slide rule does when it does multiplication is it adds the logarithm of two numbers and the, the respective logarithms of two numbers and then takes the anti-log of the sum, which gives you the product. How to do multiplication and division on a slide rule? It's simple. First, let's introduce the scales that we're going to use. We're going to use the C scale and the D scale. These are the most basic scales on the slide rule. The left side 1 on the C and D scales we're going to call the left side index. And the right side 1, or 10 in this case, you can call the right side index. When multiplying, you take one of the indices of the C scale and set it to the first number you want to multiply on the D scale. So say for example we want to multiply 7 by 6. So we take one of the indices on the top and uh, move it to the number you want on the bottom. So if I try the left side, then, okay, so I've moved it here, okay? Or, well, multiplying by 7 by 6, right? So let's move it to the 7, right? And I move the cursor here to see, to verify that it's actually in line. Okay, they're in line. But now the second step is to move the cursor to the 6 on the top scale and then read the answer on the bottom scale. Since 6 is all the way over here, off the slide rule itself, we'll need to use the right side index. So let's move this and put the right side index upon the 7. So line it up. Mm close enough. Okay, now we move the cursor to the 6 on the top scale and read the answer 4 and then subdivision 1 and 2. 42 on the bottom scale. And that's how you do a multiplication. The thing with the slide rule is that it doesn't place the decimal place for you. Decimal point. You have to place it yourself. So you need to know approximately where your answer lies in the realm of numbers. Let's do another example, a little bit more difficult this time. Let's do uh, 1.3, 1, let's say 1.35, let's be adventurous. 1.35 times 2.65. 1.35 will be about here, and then 2.65, uh, 1, 2.65 will be approximately 2.6, 2.8, okay, so 2.6, and then 6.5 would be here. The divisions aren't always the same. So back here, you can see 1, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, right? But here it's 2, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. So if I have 2.5, 2.6, and then halfway between 2.6 and 2.7 would be 2.65. So 1.35 times 2.65 will be, let's see, 3.12345, about 3.59 or so. Let's see, 1.35 times 2.65. 
let's see. So we have 3.57. That's about right. With the slide rule, you can get up to three significant digits of accuracy. And the third significant digit, is significant digit is typically a sort of a guess, especially if you're at an amateur level like I am. But that's how you do multiplication on a slide rule. Division on a slide rule is very similar, except that you kind of switch it around. For division, you put the top number of the fraction on the bottom and the bottom number of the fraction on the top, and you read the answer off one of the, ind off one of the indices. So say, for example, I want to divide 2 by 3, right? So it would be 2 over 3. On a slide rule, I would put the 3 over the 2. Um, let's line it up. And read the answer. 0 0.667 off the index that lies on the, on the scale. So, I mean, the other index is off the scale, so obviously you can't read off of that one. That's how you do division on a slide rule. Squaring and cubing is pretty simple as well. All you have to do is, you don't have to slide the thing at all. You set the number you want to, to uh, square on the bottom scale. So, say, for example, I want to square 3. Right, so I set to 3. Let's move this scale out of the way completely. I can actually take this out completely. Okay. So I want to square 3, right? So I take 3, and I read the answer 9 off of the A scale. So we're on the D scale. We read out the A scale. Say I want to take the square root. If you want to take the square root of a number with an odd number of digits, then you use the left side of the A scale. But if you want to square root a number that has uh, an even number of digits, you use the right side of the A scale. So say, for example, I want to take the square root of 16. I take the square root, I put the cursor at 16, and I read the answer 4 off the D scale. If I want to square root the number 256, I would have to put the cursor at 256 here and read the answer. 250, uh, 2.56. That would be about there. Now I read the answer 16, or as it says here, 1.6 times 10 to the first off the D scale. Cube rooting is similar, except the, the rules for digits, since it's, as you can see, there's three divisions. We have the first division, second division, and the third division over here. So cube rooting is this, is pretty similar, and cubing is identical. Let's put this back in. Okay. On the back side, we have trigonometric functions. I'll cover those in a separate video uh, later on, but we can do trigonometric functions here. Sine, cosine, and tangent. Well, there you have it, the basic operation of a slide rule. Now you know how a slide rule works. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time. Till then.